Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Doom Productions podcast. Uh, I am Jordan. I'm Ethan. And we are joined today by our first guest on the podcast. Uh, Hello, I am Mayhew, star of Hit Video Carnage. Wait, no, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> hit Movie Video Carnage. Um, we got a star today. We have a guest star. Um, if you weren't aware, or if the viewers aren't aware, uh, we've known May for a long time. And mm-hmm. we've tried doing podcasts with... <laughs> May before. I can't remember how many times. It felt like a couple of times. At least like two or three, we've yeah. actually sat down and recorded something. Back this was years ago. In yeah. the Caramel Shark days, if anyone's been oh. following us for that long. What an era. The prime era. Yeah. Um, it's all been downhill since. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> I guess that actually, that would be a great place to start off. People know us as Doom Productions. Um, we've been doing this Doom Productions thing for a little over uh, it's a year. just about a year and a month now. For yeah. the longest time, from 2013 to 2020, 20. like early yeah. 2020, we were Caramel Shark Studios. Yeah. Um, May has been there for pretty much all of it. Yeah. I, so so you, how would you yeah. describe that period to people? It was fun. That was, I feel Doom Productions is y'all taking it seriously and like, actually putting in the time and effort needed to make more quality like features or quality shorts whereas caramel shark was much more just friends fucking around like Mm -hmm. it was just um, the scripts were less scripts and more guidelines i feel Mm -hmm. like it was very much so we just kind of were like all right this is the movie let's go have some fun in front of a camera and then put it together yeah and It Seems was accurate. great. Yeah. It was fun. It was a ton of fun. Those Let's are the rebel years. I know. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where uh, I look back on those years pretty like, uh, I'm like, oh, I kind of miss those days. Right? <laughs> Everyone being available. Because uh, let's, let's go down to who was in our crew. Yeah, because we had a huge. ton of people. Okay. We had a lot of Hold people. Up. Yeah. Oh, do you need I'm, to remember well, them? Well, no, I'm bringing up like, <laughs> we have the big cast photo from Great American City. We had most of the people who worked with us Except at that time. Me. May wasn't in there. May wasn't in so it, I though. wasn't in Great American I meant, Sleepover. When I think of Caramel Shark Studios, though, I think of, like, my PSU days mm-hmm. a little bit, like Spaceman. Like, that, whatever I think year of, yeah. you yeah. did Spaceman, that's what I think of. Yeah. So there was the three of us. Yeah. There was Bones. Mm-hmm. Bones. Uh, Phil. Phil. Travis, always. Travis. Um, Ace. Ace. Mm-hmm. Richard was around then. But Rich. it was kind of like a guest star, I guess, more at that point. He'd yeah. come in every now and again. Like, and Morgan. 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 Who was, like, the other big, like... I feel like us, Ace Bones, were there for the majority of shoot the days. Four of, or we were five. five, yeah. five yeah. The five of us were pretty much there all the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Bones directed stuff. Yeah. So. yeah. And then, like... McFerrin before oh yeah high yeah. school like that was mm-hmm. or before the end of high school uh that was up until your PSU days really yeah and then yeah your PSU days it was I'd say the five of us more than anything. yeah I would say primarily so yeah primarily it was three of us Bones and Ace mm-hmm. so I guess it's not that big but like to now but, it's like compared yeah. to just you two it's compared to the two of us but we were also pulling a lot bigger cast per movie generally mm-hmm. yeah that, that made true. it feel a lot bigger because, like, I think on our biggest day of Great American Sleepover, we had 14 people on set or something crazy like that. That's too many people. Which is a but lot of we people. we didn't know, like, four, three the, or four. A, a lot of them. Yeah, we what? didn't even know. They just what? showed up with McFerrin. <laughs> what? We were, like, and, we were like, Andrew, show up, please, yeah. with people. And he was like, okay. Was and this before or after he went off to college? Or he just no, acquired we, we people? Just, just acquired we had people. just graduated high school. It yeah. was that summer. That had to be Acma kids then. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it was Acme Kids. So we were just pulling people left and right. Anyone who wants to be in a movie, go for it. Come on in. I don't even know if they wanted to be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, um, if you watch Great American Sleepover, whoever's listening, and you go to the party scene at the end, anyone who looks uncomfortable on screen may have been uncomfortable in real life. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> they might not have been acting. In general. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, good times. But it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think the height of that period was probably that. 2016 year mm-hmm. was we, that when so Ombres? that's when we shot ombres and well ombres York. was 2015 oh you're right um but six 2016 was serious business oh, black yeah. coffee 
or no, yeah, black coffee, mm-hmm. shark bites. Mm-hmm. Um, what a time. Yeah, and the fact that shark bites that feels like such a high school. Like yeah. in my brain, I'm like, oh yeah, I did that when I was 16. Now I was like 19. I remember. I was almost 20. Bringing you home to covered. my parents, covered in chocolate. It's like mom in a can trash make, bag. In a trash bag is your shirt. Like make mom can may use our our shower. Why? And you just walk in, <laughs> and like, they don't question it. But I'm like, just don't. No, you don't need to ask. Filmmaking. <laughs> and I love, I love even more that our original plan was to hose you off outside. And it, it was, was like it was freezing. February. It was February. Yeah, like yeah, we'll just hose you off all outside, and we were all like, oh yeah, that's fine. And then we like stepped outside for one second. I think you went to grab the hose. I was like, this ain't happening. <laughs> no, we would have yeah. killed you. <laughs> was Bones there for shooting shark bites, or is it us and Ace? I think it was, I think Ace. It was us and Ace. Ace was. Yeah, yeah it was Ace. Was there Ace was sure. in it. I don't think Bones was there. Yeah, Bones was there for Race at Smile. That was the thing we shot at, at the church that Bones was a part of yeah because they were running sound yeah that was the first that was probably one of the only times we had a sound person yeah like a proper like boom recording like and we did rehearsals that time too because it was all one take yeah oh gosh that That was was i forgot about that one that That might have been like our most professional way of running a set i think that would have been i see i think back of doing a moving one take now and i'm like i probably i could probably do like acting wise i would feel more comfortable now than Mm -hmm. i did back then yeah but I don't know, yeah. like, imagine doing a full feature in one take. Like, um, the, you can't fuck up for, like, an hour and a half. People in theater do it all the time, yeah. though. Are we in theater? We're not in theater. <laughs> you know, I did some middle school plays back in the day. No, I, I, when I watch the, or think about theater or whatever, I think, both as an actor and as an audience member... I'm like, oh, well, this is a hot take. This is controversial. <laughs> oh, man. I very much prefer movies. Okay. Let's Okay, let's take it from an acting perspective. If I was going to be an actor, mm-hmm. I would not want to do a musical. Really? I, I understand. Well, okay, a musical, play, yeah. Oh. A, a play or whatever. I understand that it's more pure acting. I understand that it's like, because it's the actor's medium. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like, theater is just not my thing. Fair. That's not cool. my thing. And I guess that I guess that ties in the audience thing first. Like if I can go, I feel like I can enjoy a play, as like, oh yeah, this is fun, mm-hmm. but it's never going to be the same as movies. But that's not like the point of it. It's like it's something, different things. Yeah. yeah, it's something different. So I think maybe that's where it comes from. Just I, if I'm going to put I'm, if I'm going to put a lot of hard work into something, I would as a performer, I'd do it for a movie. But for a play, I'd be like, I have to memorize what. Yeah, uh, find someone else, please. Yeah, right? I'm like, it's not a matter of I don't want to. I would love to tr- try theater. I would theater. love to be in one scene. In the exactly. Play. That's what I would love to do. I want to show I want to play up, the make tree. a good joke, yeah. and have the entire crowd laugh, and like, get that, yeah. and then I leave. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I see. Yeah, I could get behind that. Wait, where is he for the next scene? <laughs> Gone. Go- just out. <laughs> it's the amount of work versus like the result yeah like i want i want to keep the work down but the result high but, yeah that's how i'm trying to approach the life yeah. yeah yeah um but i like plays as like a once in a while thing i think that's where they're a lot of fun i think again like they're not my thing but it's fun to be like oh snap this is great for a play that i think i like more yeah. but i'm not like yeah you showing d- up you every did day. made you did Lots of you saw a lot of plays in college. Yeah, I took some like theater appreciation classes, uh, and so I got to go see a play every week. Yeah. Uh, I personally love going and watching theater probably more than I do watching movies. Honestly, like I mm-hmm. would enjoy that more. I just watch movies more because mm-hmm. it's cheaper and easier. A lot, che- yeah, um, and you can do a lot more creative things. I feel with film that you just can't do when you're restricted to the real world. He, you heard it here, folks. May says <laughs> movies are better. <laughs> I'll sure take it. I don't care. No. no. What's my voice mean? This is suddenly just turned into us bashing the theater. <laughs> but that's not what it's supposed to be. That's not what this is. Like, the Fuck the- theater. <laughs> Thespians are nerds. I think it's very... So much for that theater appreciation class. Jeez. <laughs> it's very impressive what theater folks can pull Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's awesome. It's an art form. Uh, but we're movie people, I yeah. think, here. It, oh, yeah. Um, for the most part mm-hmm. so that's just we don't know this, listen this would just turn into a podcast of people well i guess aside from you just 
two people talking about musicals or theaters who don't know anything about <laughs> I, I, plays. Let's not say I know anything, all right? <laughs> well, more than we have. You've probably seen I've them. I've just all. seen them. That doesn't yeah. mean I know anything. <laughs> I sat in like a room probably the size of this living room uh -huh. uh, and watched people put on a modern production of Hamlet while we were just like wrapped around them in chairs in this small room. And so they'd like pull out cell phones and be like, where fuck art thou? And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> what? This is theater? Really? Um, I'm looking forward to that new uh, Macbeth movie yeah, with so, Denzel Washington where he pulls out his phone. Okay, another hot <laughs> looking take. Forward. Another hot take about actors. Uh -huh. So you'll see it in Hollywood where they're like, oh, I don't do green screen acting. That's not real acting. I need to be there in the environment. It's like, yo, you will get up on an empty stage and perform a one person play for two hours. And that's <laughs> acting, but acting in front of a green screen is not. Right. That's a pet peeve of mine that I always see, as if, like, mm -hmm. I think I think that's one of the beautiful connections between film, big blockbusters, mm -hmm. and plays, is because on a play, if you're an actor, you have to imagine everything. If you're doing, it like, a really stripped-down thing, you have yeah. to imagine there's a world beyond out there, mm -hmm. the audience isn't there, you have to imagine all this stuff, and when you're on a green screen, it's the same thing. Exactly. It's I, I think that's challenge. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree with that. I feel like... I mean, anybody who's like, oh, green screen acting isn't real acting, that, that's against the idea of acting. I'm like, yeah. I feel like if anything, that's closer to real acting than most films are. It's the well, purest yeah. form of acting because <laughs> yeah. they have to imagine everything. Yeah, yeah, you have to fully immerse yourself. Yeah, anything that spawns out like that anti-CG mindset is just like, come on now. <laughs> what? I'm very pro-practical, like personally. It's fun. I like it how it looks better, yeah. but I'm not anti CG. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like well, the way I look at it is it's like CG is an art form. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't for me, I don't care if CG looks real. Does it look good? That's yeah. my question. Yeah. I don't care if it, I know it's fake. Exactly. But yeah. show it to me, like give it some juicy texture and mm -hmm. like some cool like atmosphere and all that stuff. And I'll yeah. I'll I'm in. I just watched uh, Speed Racer for the first time yesterday. Oh, I and that, that is it. crazy unrealistic. CG, uh -huh. but damn, it's effective at what it does. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. And that's why I'm also a diehard defender of Spy Kids 3D. I think it's a great <laughs> use of CG. I think it's wonderful because it represents that era of bad video game graphics that it is set in. I think it works wonderfully for the look of the movie. I respect your opinion. Yes, but I know it's a hot take for some people. Uh, respect is a pretty strong word for how... I, what, aren't you outside? The cat's back. The cat's back. So the cat was our released. Fourth, our fourth member of the podcast today yeah. is she Kitters. Made an, she made an appearance in the Halloween episode, I think. Oh, right on. I think, didn't she? I don't remember. I don't listen to the whole thing. I, once I get it edited, it goes out into the world. Fake fans. <laughs> yeah. Hello, kidders. Yes, approach the mic directly, actually. She's like, guys, break it up. Don't argue about Spy Kids. <laughs> Robert Rodriguez wouldn't want you to. It's not worth it. <laughs> um, well, I, I read, I can't remember when I read it, but there was a, oh, hello, cat. There was an interesting thing I read about the Wachowski sisters. Mm -hmm. I think they're, they're sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah you're I just right. I didn't want to mess that up. Um, they're... They were talking about, in retrospect, what they want to do with Speed Racer and how um, kind of, oh, geez, I can't remember the quote. I'm going to sound really stupid trying to explain this. <laughs> but they had a really smart thing about, like, comparing filmmaking to, like, the expressionist movement in art. Oh, okay, and yeah. And stripping away kind of the things we think of as, like, classical form because you know you look at a classical art piece or whatever i don't know anything about art i'm talking out of my butt here <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you look at what we think of when we think of good art and it's got like lighting you know shapes it's very realistic but then you get to like salvador dali or mm -hmm. like picasso and it's like Phew. and they wanted to do a film version of that with speed racer they succeed really there's some stuff that's crazy in that i it, mean just the way they strip out what is traditional ways of covering a scene and how they do how they flow through a scene, it's its pretty crazy. Yeah. And there's some parts where he talked, like Speed Racer is a thing where I he think talks, his mom, right? well, his mom talks about like, oh, when I watch you race, it's like watching you like make your art. Like it's art for you racing. And there's a bit where he's like drifting and like 
there's like these colors on the ground, but as he drifts through them, it like dissolves into like paint. And it's like oh, this oh. crazy good moment where you're like, I need to see that this. is oh. what filmmaking is about right there. I need to see that. Be it's so good. Tonight. It's the a Witch great, man, it's on HBO right now. Really? It's great, yeah, Dang it's on it. HBO Max. You gotta watch Go it. watch yep. it. The Wachowskis are such good filmmakers. I'm so excited for the new Matrix. Oh, oh. can't wait. Oh. I, uh, have you all seen Cloud Atlas? No, not no. yet. It's been That's a fantastic. Forever. They co-directed that with yeah. Tom Twyker, but that one is really, that one's really interesting. That Brad Pitt's really in that, good. right? No. Is, or is that Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks. Tom, it's Tom Hanks. It's yeah. where like okay. all these different actors are playing different characters. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt's Ad Astra. Sorry, those movies, oh. Cloud Atlas and Ad Astra in my head are like the same movie, but yeah. yeah. No, it's there. Yeah. Some good movies. Good sci-fi directors. Yeah. Definitely. Really, really like, yeah. Very good with visuals. They've oh, always yeah. been tremendous at crafting. Just unique. Like, there's a reason Bullet Time and the Neo Dodge like yeah. have become these cliches because they did it, and everyone's like, "That looks so cool." <laughs> Gotta get me some of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're revolutionary. It's oh, oh, incredible. 100%. There was that interview Will Smith did some point in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. Someone talked to him about like, "What well, you turned down the role of Neo in the Matrix?" And he was like. Yeah, when they pitched it to me, like, yeah, the movie came out and it was amazing. They were like, Will, why weren't you in this? And he's like, well, when they pitched it to me, it would like, he said they had the worst pitch they've <laughs> ever heard. <laughs> or to something to that effect. He said it in a funny way where mm -hmm. they were trying to describe bullet time. But if you were like, go back to 98 or 96, whenever they were shooting it, mm -hmm. or about to cast it and whatever, yeah. Um, yeah, how do you describe bullet time to someone and not sound insane? Yeah, yeah. it's like, okay, so they shoot gun and then like it just gets slower. You're going to be upside and the, down. Yeah. And, and the camera's going to be around gonna you. Round you and it's not going to be CG. Yeah. This is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> We're going to have a camera just spin around you for a second here? Well, no, because you're going to have like a hundred cameras camera. around <laughs> you. And they're all going to be taking pictures. Oh, so cool. It's brilliant, but yeah. like... What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like if if you're not like, you gotta sound crazy to someone. Yeah. If you're making something really new and special, I feel mm -hmm. like absolutely. Um, Matrix is definitely an example. Star Wars wasn't like that too, right? Oh. Totally. Like when he tried to make it, didn't people like? No one got it, right? Star Wars. I, yeah, I, I believe so. I think he... That I, sounds that, right? I'm pretty sure... I, I think, hope so, because, if damn, it's genius. If I'm remembering my so. history, I think it was Alan Ladd Jr. or Alan Ladd was one of the studio executives who didn't understand Star Wars, but he liked George Lucas. And he's like, I don't know anything about this project, but I believe in you, so here's the money. Go do it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's how it was made. But no one, like, understood it. Yeah. Hey, it worked out. That's a good investment right there. Yeah, I'd say that worked out pretty all right. Yeah, yeah all right. A little yeah. indie movie. Dude. A little, yeah. Star little, Wars. Might have heard of it. Star Wars movie. Go see a Star Wars. Go, yeah. go see a Star Wars. Oh. Rest in peace. Yeah. Speaking of sci-fi is coming out, I don't know. This feels like Dune. Are we all excited for Dune coming out? I Excited isn't the right word. I want to see what people think of it. Yeah. I don't care about it at all. Gotcha. Like, I mean, I, I mean, have you guys read the books? No, I have not. I have not read the books. Okay. I have not seen the movie. I have seen Hodorowski's Dune, which is the documentary. <laughs> yep, we saw about, that together. About how he was going to make Dune. So that's all I know about it. Didn't, yeah. Wasn't, I want to watch David Lynch's Dune. That's what I want to watch. I just yeah. got, I was at Goodwill and I saw a VHS of Dune. I was like, oh my gosh, heck yeah, I'm buying it. And then I realized in line, oh wait, this isn't... David Lynch is doing. This is the sci-fi one from 2000. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. I got it. I just was like, I'm not putting this down. <laughs> yeah. This might get super valuable. Yeah. This might Who be knows? the next NFT. So um, I'm just holding on to it, but yeah. I, I am excited to see it. I do want to watch the David Lynch Dune before I go see it. I yeah. know nothing about Dune, and I've watched YouTube videos exactly. explaining Dune. I know there's no big, worms. Yeah. big worms. Big worm. Big worm blue eyes. It was inspired by... Florence, Oregon, apparently. I don't know. What's that? Oh, Florence, the Oregon. The, the oh, place. I, I thought, thought the, you were like, the Florence, Oregon. I'm no, like, no, no. which That Flor sounds like a name. Florence, Oregon. No, sounds yeah. like a person who yeah. explores the we Amazon. we got to start a band. Florence, <laughs> Oregon. That's a good name. That, that is, is a, a good, solid name. That is a good name. Shoot no one home. take it. We're stealing that name. This is <laughs> our name. Stealing it from ourselves? Copyrighted Ethan May and George. Like, this is our game. <laughs> we're doing something with it. If only we were from Florence, Oregon, then it would have been a lot better. I know. Relocate. Florence... 
Oregon has these gorgeous sand dunes. Apparently, Frank Herbert was there, huh. and he was like, oh, that's cool. And hey, he put that into cool Dune. That's... I mean, it's called Dune. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's super interesting. I had no idea. Yeah. So I, whenever I've been tempted to read the book, because it's like a thousand pages long, it's I'm like, dense. I want to buy it in a little... There's a little bookshop there. Mm -hmm. I want to find an old copy <laughs> in that little bookshop, and I want to read it on the Dunes. But anytime I've gone in there... They've only had like the sequels, or they'll have like a yeah. new, soon to be major motion picture copy. Mm -hmm. like, it's like, I, no, I want no, the OG. Nah. I want the OG. And it's like the specific like context that I'll read it. But. <laughs> That's great, but like, that is the optimal way to do it. Yeah. Um, but I, I am, I feel kind of like, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm sure I really like Denis Villeneuve and yeah. all his movies. Um, Blade Runner, I was so pissed I did not see that in theaters. Because when oh, I finally oh, saw it. Yeah. I didn't either. I loved it. Yeah. I saw it way after, and I was like, that was amazing. One of the most visually stunning movies of like That's the That's why decade. movie theaters are still around, is for movies yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, seriously. And so I'm seeing the movie. I don't know how I feel. Like, I'm not like super excited, but I'm not like, I don't not want to see it. I'm like, it's Denis Villeneuve, so I'm yeah. going to see it. Mm -hmm. Let's just see what happens yeah. once Fair. I'm there. I'm, I'm just hopeful it's going to be one of those like cool, again, like movie experience where it's like, oh, damn, that was great. I got to see that in theater. Yeah. But I, I yeah, again, I think all of us agree. I know nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, no. We know nothing about <laughs> I know nothing about anything, but I'm excited about the prospects. Yeah. 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 And it's always interesting with those movies where they have like just packed full of huge cast like names oh yeah where it's like, it's got, like so everybody many names. those uh, either those movies make me the most nervous or the most excited and there's no in between see i've always wanted to be in like a like a a big one of ensemble movie like that mm -hmm. not one that's probably going to be as good as dune but even something really like some cheesy like disaster end of the world movie yeah where it's brad like, pitt angelina jolie will smith and jordan Ross. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but it's like where you get like there's a cast of 20 to 50 people mm -hmm. yeah. i would love to be just like the scientist who's like the meteor's about to hit sir and that's it like that's my <laughs> like i would just love to like have yeah. like a tiny little, Your little part. charlie day pacific yeah. rim moment <laughs> yes no exactly charlie day's part of pacific rim that like Something like that. He's just there to be a weird scientist. Yeah. <sighs> Pacific Rim was a good movie. It's a freaking great movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh. Um, I want to see, I wonder if Omzi's going to play Dune. That would be the Ooh, place to see it. that's a good it. place to see it. That would be it. Actually, that's, um, for people who don't know, we made a documentary about theaters in Oregon. And we talk about this theater, oh, I don't know what it's called. The Omzi something theater. Empirical? Uh, empirical, Empir yeah. Empir empirical theater. And it's huge. And all three of us, we've gone to shows there to get, explain what this, the amazingness of this theater. It's, yeah. it's like IMAX Plus. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's, it, I feel like it's effectively the same, probably, technology as IMAX. Yeah. But they just, I don't know, their sound, the screen, it's big screen, booming audio. Yeah. I remember, I think I've only actually seen anything there once and I was spirited away. And that was the great. first time yeah. I ever saw it. Great. Like whenever, oh, great whenever way. they do their anime like uh, Studio Ghibli stuff, mm -hmm. it's like so good. God, it's like, just incredible. You know, if they ever do more of that, I'll be there. The screen though is like if it's like two stories tall. You you yeah. genuinely if you were sitting anywhere but the top rows, you have to physically turn your head yeah. to see the screen. Yeah, it's, it's huge. massive. Um, it just it, you. It is the closest you can get to an in the movie experience. You don't need 3D for that screen. <laughs> yeah, no, you were there. <laughs> yeah, and it's not the same. Like because I could probably hear some people say, "Why don't you just go to a normal theater and sit in the first row?" No, no. no. <laughs> it's no. it's different when you have like a massive curved screen. Yeah. That, the like, screen is below you and above, like yeah, that, like you're not looking up to. You are just in it. Yeah, <laughs> it's oh. God, I want to go see him film there again. I'm, I'm, are, I'm looking at it right now to see what's playing. The movies. They're doing all the Lycan movies there right now. Ooh, I just oh, they got tickets are. to see Coraline. Oh, oh, heck yeah. My stepdad no longer works for Lycan. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Yo. Okay. I would love to work there, but getting in is... Lyca? Yeah. I remember applying there one time as a, like a junior behind-the-scenes videographer. It seems that the way, the best way to go about it is like you have to be a student studying for mm -hmm. that specific field and then apply for an internship. Yeah. Even then, people probably apply from all over the world. So. Yeah. But I've been there once. 
It was pretty it's cool. It's a really tour. cool studio. I, I toured uh, when they were doing Kubo and the two strings. Oh, nice. That's so signed did, the NDA, right? Yeah, I had to sign an NDA because of it. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, it was re it was really cool. I remember going to when they had the like a setup at the Oregon Art Museum and they had the big skeleton in there and everything. So yeah. I was like, I remember when Jordan got to see that. <laughs> That's my biggest was... shame because I worked. I was employed for the. I didn't leak it. <laughs> Portland Art Museum. But I not once that oh. summer did I go to the Leica exhibit. How? I went you, how? Twice. Because I was like, I can go whenever I want for free, and I'll see it eventually. That was my mentality, and then I just I just missed it. Paid for, oh, I didn't have to pay for it actually. I had the student pass for like an annual, so it was like nice. really cheap. But yes, fantastic exhibit. Yeah, oh, so good. You missed out. Yeah, sure did. Feel shame. I know. I know. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. What are we talking about? Sorry, I'm like looking at tickets for OMSI right now. I completely now. forgot. We were talking about, uh, how do we get to OMSI? Because we are talking about Dune. Dune, Dune, and Dune and Dune would be good at OMSI. So where were we going before Dune? Well, we were this? in the Wachowski sisters stuff, and then we've just been talking about good, good old movies. We've just movies. been hitting some flicks. I feel like we've also been just talking about things we don't know anything about. <laughs> yeah. so, all right, so, Dune paintings, I'm uh, theater. Do, so like reproductive health. <laughs> Let's just get into it. All right. So here, I have done no research, but I'm fairly certain I'm no, correct well, actually, based on the actually, Facebook pages I do that I follow. have something to say on reproductive health. Oh, okay. It's kind of related. It's kind of not. A friend of mine from film school mm -hmm. is making a movie. She oh. makes wonderful movies. Their, their page on Instagram is called Monsters Femme Films. Check them out. They're, they're currently funding a new movie called Baby Fever. And it tackles those issues. Oh, fuck yeah. All of the movies they make are like, kind of, they use horror as like an allegory or kind of a commentary on social issues. Okay. And so the first movie they made was um, Fanatico, which was aw awesome. Camp Calypso was the next one. And they're doing, the, the team, there's like three of them, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and they just make really good horror movies. Nice. So if anyone's listening, check out Monsters Femme Films. Yeah. On Instagram, we go to our Doom Productions page and then like go to who we're following. We're following them. Like, yeah. Fanatico is a fantastic film. Yeah, they make so cool, re really kind of retro style horror movie. Like if you're a big horror fan, you'll love like the kind of movies they make. Yeah, and it's called Baby Fever. Is the new one they're making? They're trying to fund it. Um, yes, that's nice. rad. Yeah, no, that's horror films. Oh, oh, yes. it's a good time of year to yeah. watch a horror flick. Yeah. Yes. Horror so films that was that was how I tied that into. You, you made it work. You made me spouting nonsense work. <laughs> Shoot, I'm impressed. Okay, look at us go. Yeah, you're yeah. professional podcast host now. Oh snap. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. So May. Uh huh. How's it going? That's <laughs> going great. Just chilling. Vibing, you know. What's what's fame been like since the rap of video carnage? It's actually been strange. Uh, Do people have people? Did you notice an uptick in like followers or oh, people yeah. commenting? And, oh and no, it? absolutely. When video carnage was released, I got like a solid following chunk. Oh wow. Uh, a solid like ten, maybe fifteen. And how did you capitalize on this? <laughs> uh, I immediately started bickering with one of them. Nice. <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, yeah. If you're listening. I stand by what I said. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, no, it's it's actually been really fun watching the reaction to... I mentioned this in my um, interview you guys did for Video Carnage, but just yeah. seeing the reaction to that film has been great. I still go check Letterbox or check the comments like every week, just see if there's anything new. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, it's cool seeing people dig something you work on. Yeah. 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 Well, we just worked on, I mean, another thing. We sure kind did. It's it's in the secret. So there is more May coming if you are if you love like May and Video Carnage. But yeah, that was a fun one, and I that one felt like really kind of I don't know if culmination is the right word, but it felt like we're building to something mm -hmm. kind of big with that one. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but My Video Carnage felt like a very like even in like the lead up to the release and then just during production it felt like this was something big mm -hmm. like we, like you could just tell like this is gonna be like a decent one like yeah. this <laughs> this feels like a movie <laughs> the first decent one from no the movie. <laughs> <laughs> like it's even i feel like usually you have that little like i don't know is it gonna turn out like there's yeah. that fear mm -hmm. like are people gonna like it but like with video cards i feel like the whole time we're all pretty confident like this is gonna turn out good 
Like, there yeah. was confidence in that production. It was yeah. exciting because it was coming from, we had released October in House mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. like, a and year o ago. Brother. Now, and O Brother. So, three so those were our three movie. movies. But those, I don't know, those all kind of felt combined as, like, our, like, we're just starting out. Hello, this is like our introduction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Video Carnage was like, we took a couple months off and we were kind of building towards this thing. And then it finally released and it was like, okay, we're doing productions. <laughs> yeah. No, it was because, yeah, I feel like that's really the hard separation between Caramel Shark and Doom Productions. Like, even though the, the three features came mm -hmm. out before or after the name change, I think. Uh, Old Brother Old came Brother out before. Old Brother was before. Old Brother was, so, was before. technically a Caramel Shark Studios film. <laughs> But it's also... But it's also a Doom Productions film? Yeah. For, I, th I think it's a Doom Productions movie. Yeah. I consider it that. Caramel Shark in name, not in era. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not in spirit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But now it's like we've already... Wait, how many movies have we done? Video Carnage. Mm -hmm. Video Carnage. Uh, See, you, See soon. you soon. Wild mm -hmm. Boys. Wild Boys. And then we've got we, Bell we've Rings coming out We've this wrapped year. Bell Rings. That's wrapped Bell shooting. Rings. It's just coming out. Um, and then we have one more coming out this year. Year and then there might be a documentary. There might be follow. yeah, there might be some more stuff nice. coming out. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah who knows? There's, there's cool. always room for more. Whenever there is, you know I'm here. Just, just, oh yeah, just grab me, pull me, like speak into a camera. The documentary is actually just May's life story. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have to clear some rights there. <laughs> I need some releases from some key people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. May's rap history is pretty intense. So. The Albino Snowstorm days. Albino Snowstorm days were legit. I got into some shit. <laughs> Can't help it. It's just one of those Life things, on you know. the streets, you know? <laughs> it's real hard for me and... Tanner's Born, Oregon. Born. Yeah. <laughs> Who growing up on the mean Cornell streets. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. No, I... Uh, very, very privileged. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. Beaverton, Oregon. Hashtag blessed. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, it's, that, it's that thing where it's the blessed, but then also Beaverton is like with the same <laughs> <laughs> vertically. Don't tell the Beaverton School District that. They'll use it. Oh, gosh. I hope Ooh. Not. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Blessed has enough letters. I think it just be like Beaverton School District. <laughs> they could do it. You're right. I mean, I'm gonna pitch this to them. Uh, no, where where were we? I don't I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> this feels like a lost episode. I'm not gonna lie. To I, you. It I, does, <laughs> but it's gonna be released. That's it's fair. Gonna be released because we need something for Monday. So I respect, I respect that. Um, if I this is a little peek behind the curtains, I guess. But <laughs> coming up with ideas for videos and podcasts and subjects, it's very very hard for <laughs> us. Just because, well, one, we're busy doing, like, making movies. The other yeah. one is, I feel like we've said a lot of stuff we've needed to say, so now, like... It's what we want to say? <laughs> or what, yeah, I mean... Or what? It's, I feel like for now, y'all, when you started, you really had a very consistent, heavy flow of, like, hey, these are the tips and tricks that we've picked up, and it's mm -hmm. starting to reach that point where it's like, all right, we've shown what we've learned and taught ourselves, and now it's back into further learning. Yeah. And like you're having to push yourselves to keep making content where not only are you providing that advice for other people, but you're growing yourselves. Wow, that's a great way to put it. Wow. That's <laughs> what I'm here for. That's it. But, I wouldn't have thought of that. What May said, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, no, and it's it's very fun to watch as both someone who helps with productions and is a fan. Mm -hmm. Got them notice on hit, ring the bell. If you're listening, subscribe and ring the bell. And if you're listening on Spotify, you make sure to follow if you know when the next episode comes out. We'll be on out. Spotify? Whoa. Yo, the we'll episodes are all on Spotify. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it's official. We, uh, yeah, you know, we had to bribe a couple people to get on I was going to say. Yeah, we have some higher ups, you know. <laughs> Getting fractions of a penny per stream. <laughs> yeah, you know it. Was well, there like two listeners on Spotify? <laughs> I haven't looked at our analytics recently. <laughs> I would guess it's like two listeners. I think it's a little higher. <laughs> I think Three. it was like 13. <laughs> Oh really? That's I, solid. That is more than I, I would have expected. I would be shocked if there's if there's yeah if there's that many people following us on Spotify because most of our audience is on YouTube. I don't know why yeah. they would go to Spotify. Well, I guess it says you can find us on yeah, Spotify. I, yeah, I, I mean I advertise it because it's you know it's convenient. Yeah. yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll go, I'll you can close the play. You can you like can listen, minimize it. Go on it. your run. Just yeah. hang out with us. Dude, if you're if you're running right now and listening to us, 
appreciate you. Run Keep fast. going. Run Don't that extra around. mile. Don't turn around. Stop slowing down. Don't turn around. You're looking pathetic right now. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a sound effect of like a car honk, just really <laughs> blaring. Sirens. Don't you love that when you're driving in the car and then you hear can't really like sirens? Oh yeah. <laughs> I've never driven what a... in a car. <laughs> It's some movie magic. For? When you I, say you've never driven a car, like just straight up never driven. No, I've driven cars. I've oh, okay. actually I drove a car recently. Fun um, fact, you did not drive a car. This is for the audience. You did not drive a car in Video Carnage. I did not. I that was, was not all up completely to it. fake. I'm sure what they sh it was you two shaking the car violently. And waving a light in front of yeah, the Yeah, you just <laughs> <laughs> It worked. It looked good. It looked great, honestly. It looked way better than I thought it was gonna look. Even after we shot, I was like, alright. I hope that turns out. Yeah. Looked uh, good. Looked very yeah. good. That's how I uh, plan to do a lot of our driving nice stuff now. It looks stellar. It's just easier to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Green screen for Driving Mr. President. That was a... Oh, my God. Oh my I forgot God, y'all did that. that. I remember... Movie. I was there for shooting. I think that was probably the first version of Driving Mr. President. Yeah. Because you were there for... Yeah, the first one. Because it was a long and... take, remember? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was going to be a long take from the top level of a building to the floor. That was from Bones' one. Yeah. Oh. When Bones was directing it. Yeah. Got the driving Mr. President days. I remember that day, yeah. I wasn't there that. Was, that, that was also 2016, so yeah. technically it was another feature film that we shot. Well, I mean, not feature. Well, it was a short, because the first version short. of it was a short. Yeah, it was ah. a long short. Um, long short. Yeah. That's the documentary that'll hopefully come out this year, is Driving uh, Mr. President. The uh, movie plus the documentary. I need, a, I need a message to Bones to see if we can get a time to meet up and just talk. do a big round table about that project, because yeah. this needs a, a single sit down. <laughs> just... Just so what happened here? Well, I made a GIF. <laughs> For real, that is not too far off. Too I made a GIF, off. and then we had to restart the entire production. Gosh, what a great project. Have the table set up like, you know, like it's the last supper. Just a really long table, <laughs> with a single spotlight shining. We're just all, like, sitting around it. Um, Chun Lee's there. Jesus is there for some reason. Nothing to say. He's just eating. Yeah. Just vibing. Just vibing. Eating some bread. Getting some wine, man. It, nope, I'm gonna let that joke stand, my noggin. Oh, uh, one I was like, oh, here we no, that's a that's a. Uh, that's not a public one. Yeah, that, that's that's for the personal collection. That's a that's a that's when the cameras and mics are not rolling. No, that's just a uh, in my brain alone. It doesn't need to leave these lips. We'll ask about it later. I will not tell you. Damn. Ugh. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, how's it going? It's going good. But that's the second time. Asked, how that's unfortunate, wow, isn't it? That's going. How long have we been going? We're about 37 minutes. Damn, okay. Damn. How, how, what how, what Damn. is your average? An hour about. An hour, hour to about? 40, hour to 50 minutes, somewhere in there. I feel like we change topics so fast, I can't keep up with like... Yeah, right? We've talked about so many different things today. I was really impressed how much we were leapfrogging. <laughs> Well, what was okay, my brain. <laughs> the first time we ever tried to record a podcast? Do y'all remember what we tried to do? That was the movie talked. podcast. I it was think. a movie podcast. It was like the Caramel Shark Movie Club. I think is what it was going to be. Was yeah. was it? If my memory serves correctly, was it a review of Star Wars: The Force Awakens? I don't remember. That might have been part of it. I know we talked about a lot more, and there were also way more of us. There were like five of us on set. Yeah, for that. I think there was. I, I think it was us, three of us, and plus Bones, Bones and Ace. Ace. Was McFerrin there? I don't think McFerrin was there. I don't think so. Are we sure? Maybe an early... No, that would have been the Hunger Games one, I think, when McFerrin was there. Remember when we did a watch party of, Mc, of Hunger Games? Oh, that like a, That's like a riff tracks kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it was like our yeah. watch along. Oh, whoa, wow. Yeah, it's still... It, we still have it. We never deleted it. That's... It's on the channel. It's just private and it's yeah, buried. I yeah. forgot that, that it existed. It still pops up as one of our most viewed videos. It had like a thousand views by the time we took it down. Weird. Yeah, I don't know why. Just because it said Hunger Games in it, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. One what? of the few times we were truly topical and on it <laughs> yeah. in terms of what was going on in yeah. pop culture. Oh yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah. It's okay. It's, it was Star Wars. Yeah, I think and that wouldn't sure. surprise me. That was Let's a very right. important film to us back then. Or like it was still is. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know, Star Wars. I Star had, Wars in general. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. That's more what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Like not necessarily Force Awakens specifically. I like it. It still holds up. Mm. But is uh, Star Wars good? I mean, when that trailer Star dropped, Star though. I oh oh. I, top I, ten hype. I never saw Jordan that hyped. <laughs> I will say that Star Wars Visions was amazing. 
play Star Wars. I've only watched you the first. You didn't see Star Wars Visions? I don't know what that is. I've okay, only watched okay. the first four. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Okay, this is the first time you're hearing that. Okay, Lucasfilm yeah. contacted like nine of the top anime studios in Japan and said, would you like to tell a non-canon Star Wars story? Ooh. Just whatever you want. Whatever you want. And there's, they're what? like, they're like, and they're 15 to 20 minutes long each. Oh, And shit. they're on Disney Plus right now, and you can watch them. Oh, Yo. that's my evening. Can we just talk about how great episode one is? Episode one is called, what's it, the Ronin? Uh, or, yeah, the, the Ronin. The Swordmaster or the something? The Ronin. It's in black and white, mm -hmm. except for the lasers and lightsabers. Oh. Rainy day to a rural, uh, like, medieval Japan is basically the, the Oh, what's vibe. that period called? What's the samurai period? The, yeah. Whatever that is, the samurai period. Yes. And feudal. Feudal, feudal Japan. Feudal Japan. <laughs> it looks like that. So hard to but think of like, the word. Oh my gosh. It's like an Akira Kurosawa film. Yeah. But Ooh. it's Star Wars. That's not, fucking dope. Not it's all of dope. them are like, they're all different. That's what's yeah, so Yeah, that's great. just episode one. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's a really great project. You got to check it out. That reminds me of yeah. Animatrix. Like, yeah, it's very similar. Great very similar. Yeah. yeah, just here's the source universe. Do what you want. Have it, fun. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's really close to what it is. Uh, that's the dream. It's like have Marvel walk up to you and be like, hey, you want to just make a Spider-Man story? I'd be like, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank That'd you. Be great. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't watched the What If stuff. That seems kind I've of interesting. I've seen the first couple. It's really good. Okay, I nice. enjoy it a lot. Nice. Yeah. The um, Have you seen Mandalorian? I watched the first like three episodes. Oh man! You gotta see season two. I need the I, all the Disney Plus Star Wars content. I need to catch up on, and I still haven't seen the last of the prequel trilogy or the sequel trilogy. Oh, <laughs> oh, we were about to have some problems <laughs> no, you know, there. We watched Revenge of the Sith together. <laughs> Just never saw Attack times. of the Clones or Phantom Menace. Don't know who this Anakin kid is, but <laughs> <laughs> seems important. No, I have seen the prequels many, many, many times. I fucking, I definitely hated the prequels growing up because it was cool to hate the prequels. But like in hindsight, those are entertaining films. Dope movies. I like stand the by that those movies are amazing, amazing movies. I'll go, I'll go toe to toe. With I love one. Phantom Menace has my favorite vibe of all of them in terms of like the yeah. look. I think that it just does something that just it's just old enough mm -hmm. that the way that they blend everything is just so. The feel of it is like. Yes, I think mm -hmm. I, that's amazing. I, but I, I mean, that's and that's not to discredit yes. anything that comes after. It's just the vibe I love of that totally. one. I was watching Phantom Menace with my cousin, who hasn't seen all the Star Wars movies. So we were watching Phantom Menace, and I was Rad. like, "Does this movie look like it was made twenty years ago?" And he was like, "No, this looks like it was made yesterday." <laughs> it definitely has held up. Oh, George Lucas well. stuff holds up so good. Um, no, I'll, I will. I will stand by. I will. I think all the whether or not you enjoy the Star Wars prequels or not. I think those movies were exactly created as intended. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like there's no faults in them if you're defining fault as, oh, it like the creator had to compromise or the yeah. creator couldn't get this or that. Like, it was very much so his vision. And mm -hmm. to me, that is a successful movie, mm -hmm. in my opinion. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Other people might disagree, but I would stand by that by the, the choices in that movie. Yeah. Any of those movies. I think I, Phantom Menace, I have some beef with, like, young Anakin, um, just due to personality, not feeling, I guess, quite as coherent with Anakin throughout the rest of the mm -hmm. films, but he's also a child, yeah. and also the hate that Jake Lloyd got was yeah. no. ridiculous, uh, but Revenge of the Sith is just, anyone who says that's a bad movie, I don't believe you. The movie has one of the greatest openings of all time. Can you, can you, did, did you see it in theaters? Yeah, of course. Do you remember the 21st Century Fox logo, then the, and then you, yeah. And oh, I wasn't <laughs> ready. I and was like, whoa. When they flip over the Star Destroyer and go down into the battle, it's oh. like, we in it, we in it. <laughs> oh. It's like going to church, you're just like Seriously. raising your hands. Seriously, it was the like a religious The military version of the Force theme, oh. and then the battle at the very end, like it's, mm -hmm. No, I will. No Star Wars movie has ever gotten bigger than Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, impossible. The scope is unmatched out of any of the Star Wars. I movies. mean, George knew. I mean, that was at the point at that time. That was the end. Yeah, it wasn't Return of the Jedi. It's like that's the boom mm -hmm. book close. So you gotta end yeah. on a high note. He so delivered. Good. Yeah, uh, Attack of the Clones is not a good movie though. I I will I will disagree with that. It I'm is, okay with that. It feels like Act Two of a movie.
And it is because it's the middle. Of yeah. The, so uh, when you watch the prequels as one movie, I feel like it's a bit less jarring. I Agreed. guess if if you Agreed. were to argue that, but I also think it's a really I enjoy Attack of the Clones. I, I just I, don't like Jar Jar. Jar Jar's not in Attack of the Clones. He's in it for like what two am I seconds. Thinking of? Jar Jar's in it, but it's just in the very beginning. Because he's part of the Senate. Well, he's not like a prominent. God, he's, he's no. a don't prom- say those words. <laughs> Stop one. saying Jar Jar's part of the Senate. <laughs> he's the reason the Empire, the Emperor, mm-hmm. took power. Yeah. Uh, no, with I think because George has always said the movies were meant to be seen one through six. Like he considers yeah. it one movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that it feeling partial. I again because that's what the filmmaker His intended. His vision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't say well that was poorly made. It was made as intended. Whether that not that intent that was worked a good for you, decision or that's, like yeah, that's your call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's fair. That's fair. I also love to look at the clone troopers in that movie a lot. I the, think they, I think episode two clone troopers are my favorite clone troopers. They looked dope. They were looked there really like cool. the partial the, like the, Mandalorian? Yeah, I love things. I love that helmet design. Mm-hmm. I love how sleek they are. I don't know. No. Yeah, they were they just they were really cool. cool. They make me think of playing Star Wars Battlefront one yeah. on the Xbox as a kid all the time. Yeah. Those are oh, the clones that you could play so as. So much and so much. It's just so good. That's a good one. Yeah, you know. Star Wars is amazing. I just want a lightsaber. That's all I want. We have lightsabers. Yeah, we got but lightsabers. But real ones. Oh, we yeah. do not quite have that. I want a real lightsaber. And then I can die happy. Hopefully. I feel like, you know, nerds are very powerful in this day and age. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I feel like... If we got people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk out there with one all the money, one of them's gonna make a lightsaber. One of them yeah. has to be like, I want a lightsaber, and is gonna get it. <laughs> that's because that's, that's how it works time, for them. Only a matter of time before it trickles down. <laughs> yeah. Trickle down lightsabers. <laughs> it's all, you see, Reagan had it right. <laughs> Reagan's Star Wars plan and trickle down economics. He wasn't talking about economics. He was talking about Star Wars. Just everyone got it mixed up in their heads. No. Uh. <laughs> the Star Wars defense and his Reaganomics were actually the same thing. It's yeah. <laughs> He, he's just talking about how blasters are going to be a real thing. Well, that's what's funny though is that like everyone knows what a lightsaber is. Yeah, yeah. like everybody. That's universal. Like you show someone, be like, okay, you have hilt. Be like, okay, when push button, bzzz, oh, a lightsaber. Yes. Well, I work. I work at an elementary school. I work with kids who don't speak English. I mm-hmm. work with these two kids who came right from Afghanistan within the last year. Okay. They wow. know who Baby Yoda is. Yeah, of course they do. It's fucking Baby Yoda. <laughs> Star Wars is everywhere. It's, I want one. It's, it's yeah, like who the, doesn't? It's like how people communicate, like that in particular. Star it's War- that level of yeah. in the like global consciousness. Yeah. And it's so weird because I don't know if that's because of. The Mandalorian, but when I was at another school a few years ago and episode nine was coming out, I was asking students, middle schoolers, I was like, Hey, you're gonna go see some new Star Wars? They're like, no, it doesn't, eh. And it's like, but it's Star Wars. And it, and I don't I, that's not a comment on the quality of those movies, but it's it's weird how like it will skip a generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like the kids growing up with the Mandalorian are probably gonna be like big Star Wars people. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. There there's gonna be so many kids with baby Yoda tattoos. Mm-hmm. Like oh my gosh. <laughs> it's the the Mandalorian is the like le- next lead that and Bad Batch are leading for this new fan base. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. The same way that the prequels did for mm-hmm. us. Yeah. And then we had the like I feel like the majority of the sequel trilogy was excitement from existing fans. Yeah. yeah. Because it was just we're continuing the Skywalker saga. It's like, well, and I'm not very, in. <laughs> now it's very divisive. I mean, I would even say the sequel trilogy, again, not a comment on the quality of those movies. Mm. It let it was as a whole, very divisive very, those movies. I feel trailer. like before there there was a clear split. You either love the prequels or hate the prequels, but everybody loves the OT. Yeah. yeah. Now there's even more fractions and fractions exactly. of, of a of a fan base and it's it's kind of, I mean, I guess that's, I mean, because there's so many people in it, it's kind of hard to ignore that, but mm-hmm. um, it's just, it's just really interesting. Like the reception theory of, of, of it all and mm-hmm. how audiences responded. I feel like though, in the next few years, we're going to get, I mean, they're never going to stop making Star Wars. It's impossible. And the stuff I hear they have planned with like the shows and the crossovers and everything, it sounds like, oh boy, we could be getting like a potential Thrawn trilogy adaptation. Yeah. Like a loose Thrawn trilogy adaptation. Mm-hmm. Well, there's just so much left of Star Wars. You can't stop. Yeah. Especially yeah. if the mouse is at the helm, you know. Oh, that mouse is going to milk the Star Wars. What's this freaking thing that Luke drinks? 
The blue milk? Yeah, what's that What's that creature? I don't remember what it's called. Know. They're going to milk the that thing teat until it's dry. <laughs> until there's no more blue Star Wars milk to slurp. <laughs> the mouse. The, the mouse. The mouse. But you know what? I'm here for it. The mouse. I'm here for uh, anything that honors George Lucas. Down that. the bourgeoisie. I'm <laughs> taking, taking my guillotine to the street for the mouse. <laughs> I just got a terrifying image in my mind of what the French Revolution led by Mickey Mouse looks like. Can they're in the streets of that, they're in the streets of downtown Disney. Yeah, I was buildings like burning. World, yeah. The guillotine comes out. Mickey's oh, <laughs> he's, he's ready to go. And no, that was not a sound effect added. <laughs> uh, Goofy is leading the charge. <laughs> leading Pluto by a leash. Because I guess some dogs are better than others. That still messes with me. That's... I can't think about that for too long. I want to know how that happened. There's exactly. just two lines of evolution, I guess, and one is just behind the I mean, the other. that's us and monkeys. I guess. That's the, it's the same concept. I would assume that from a behind-the-scenes perspective, one of the characters was created first. Mm -hmm. Or maybe Goofy was not Pluto. supposed... Pluto was always Mickey's dog. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm assuming maybe it was... Okay, either Pluto was first and then Goofy... Or Goofy was always intended to be a separate character, but then he just happened to oh. meet up, and then there's like, oh well, they're, they're just they're in the same universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. No, I'm. I don't think they had an ethics person on board at the time <laughs> for that. Hey, we well, have a one do dog walk. who's like walking and <laughs> sentient and clearly like has their own deal, and the other one's Mickey's pet. Uh, How do we? <laughs> we good? It's cool. It's kosher. No one's going to notice. <laughs> I feel like Disney was doing for a years. lot. There was a lot worse animated things <laughs> yeah. back then. Also true. Like, that's Very pretty, true. That's pretty, like... It's on their that's list. That's the least of their concerns, I think, in terms of, like, complicated history. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, if is Disney Plus, I don't know, are they censoring their I cartoons I think for a still, lot of them, or or at least how the not? last time I looked at it, what they do is they had, like, a disclaimer ahead yeah. of, like, yeah. hey... We well, that's know what HBO this Max is, did yeah. first. So it's like, yeah, I we know this is Disney problematic, it. but okay. they're preserving it for history, so they just kind of have it. But they're not but doing, they like, Song of the South is not on Disney+, Plus. I don't think. I hope yeah. not. There, there's <laughs> some reason not. where some things can be left to history. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, We can lose some of the stuff. Yeah, we don't need little Timmy watching, you know, Disney <laughs> yeah. propaganda at 2 yeah. a.m. Yeah. from yeah. World War II. <laughs> Oh God! You'll be okay without it. Sometimes I remember all the World War II like animated propaganda. And I'm it's just very like, strange. It's yeah. very like uncanny valley of like, wait, what? We did this? Wow. Yeah. The the thing is, give it another twenty years, we'll be saying that about like animated shows from the two thousands, and be like, probably. Do you realize this was propaganda? We're all gonna be like, Shrek was just trying to Bob out of your mouth. <laughs> SpongeBob is just a front for the U.S. military. System. Shrek What's was called? the reason I joined the army. <laughs> Shrek was I, the reason I joined okay, the army. I need to meet someone oh. who's genuinely a veteran and is like, Shrek was the reason I joined the military. I knew I had to protect something so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I had to fight for this. Oh my god, that makes me so happy. Oh, that's so good. Please. If that's if your you story, are veteran, please or comment. You are, or if you are currently in the military, which means you would have been in the military for 20 years, meaning that you are a high-ranking officer, I need to know if I need to meet you. Did I you need to hear from because you. of Shrek? We have a spot on the podcast ready to go for you. If you join the military for Shrek, we'll, hey, we'll take foreign countries too. If you are in my... If, if, Any if military. I must protect you. Japan because of Shrek. <laughs> Which Japan meant too. you were probably scared of Shrek invading because it's an American thing. You had to keep it out at oh. all costs. Defend your land against Shrek. Oh. So yes, if you join any military because of Shrek, please contact For us. For any reason. We'll have a form down below that you can sign up. <laughs> what those Google surveys. Where did you serve? Which Shrek Which made you branch? join? I was, was it Shrek 1, 2, or 3? I gotta know. 
You know those like military commercials? It's like, dur, 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 and it's like <laughs> these cool, like slow mo Michael yeah. Bay type shots of yeah. things. And it'll like interview, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. I joined the service because blah, blah, blah. Hi, I joined the service because of Shrek, the 2001 ending. <laughs> just moves on, doesn't acknowledge it, doesn't need any more, but that's all no, you I get. I want the next person to just be like, what? What? What, what was just said? <laughs> moves on to the next one. Did you say Shrek? <laughs> See, the thing about Princess Fiona and Shrek is that, and then it cuts away. <laughs> The U.S. Army. Built Army Strong. Uh, <laughs> Sign up today. I was on TikTok, and I was scrolling through, and you know how it gives you, like, um, just random lives yeah. occasionally? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I keep getting Army recruiters. What? Like, just Army recruiters who are alive, like, oh, hey, kids, uh, I'm here to answer your questions about the military. Uh, I can tell you how much I get paid. And I'm just like... My name's Hunter, and... <laughs> I'm just like, your, your job Shrek. is on TikTok. <laughs> I love Shrek. That's the kind of person you want on TikTok when you're recruiting, <laughs> let's be real. No, it's just, imagine, like, you're growing up and you're like, I want to protect the country. And then you talk to yourself as an adult, it's like, what do I do to save America? Like, I go on TikTok and tell propaganda to children. Did it. We're protecting the country. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of a uh, lot of jobs in the military you wouldn't think about. Yeah, like mm -hmm. that exists, which yeah. is kind of crazy. It's a, it's Huge. a whole industry. Yeah. yeah, like it, like I'm sure there's like it's someone's job in the, three people talking about the military who know nothing about the military. We're very but, good at talking about things we don't <laughs> I know. know. <laughs> um, oh, I am sure it is someone's job in the military to like. There's like. Office administrators, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah no, totally. Just, and it's like people doing you know work. Yeah, <laughs> just, right. Or, and I'm sure they still have to go to boot camp and basic training. I'm sure all that kind of stuff happens. Or like, I bet there's, those people have to teach boot camp and that's their job. So it's like, that's their teachers and stuff. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's a whole, it's a whole nother world, a whole nother industry. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But Shrek though. <laughs> yeah, anyways. And sorry, back to the important matters. <laughs> oh, jeez. Who's your favorite Shrek character? Oh, my favorite Shrek character? Puss in Boots. Solid. Solid. I, I, I think, yeah, Puss in Boots or like, oh man, who else? I, I, I think in Shrek 2, the giant gingerbread cookie was pretty great. That was Gingy? Good. Yeah, Gingy. Gingy. I think that's his name. Yeah. No, that's good. I'm I'm a donkey fan. Donkey's great. I'm a great. purist. I can't help donkey, it. Yeah. I mean, who, who wouldn't be? Who? Eddie, Eddie Murphy, man. That's a nice boulder. Eddie, Eddie Murphy is great. In that Eddie movie. Murphy's yeah. hilarious. I think Haunted Mansion is what made Yo. me really fall in love with Eddie Murphy as a kid. Haunted I'm like, Mansion. this dude's a cartoon character. I haven't thought about that movie in years. <laughs> oh, it gave me nightmares. It's this tr this, the, the tarantulas statu oh, in the, the, the grave. The That's what freaked me out. The statues freaked me out. The singing statues. Oh. Maybe the, the heads? Yeah. No, they... <laughs> I. It was weird because I'd get the song stuck in my head and I'm like, oh, it's catchy, but I'd be thinking of them like that. <laughs> so you're like enjoying it, but you're not yeah. crying as you dance. <laughs> exactly. Me in the club. We need to get them help. <laughs> help. Oh, if only they knew. <laughs> That's great. We should get busts of us that talk. <laughs> no, we shouldn't. Wouldn't that be great? No. We could have them say famous Doom Productions quotes. Mustache. <laughs> Mustache. Phenomenal. I would have one of my lines from Wild Boys. I don't know which you have one. A, I need a Chumley one, honestly. I think that's uh, the most yeah. important. That's, no, that's a separate character. bust. And, yeah. a, and a president one, just those two in the White House. <laughs> Chumley. <laughs> the Waffle House. What do we do? <laughs> Why now, Mr. President? <laughs> when, I, when I think about our time shooting, Dread, Mr. President, the the thing when I think when I hear those words, the thing that comes to my mind first is film screaming Chumley. Oh, that's absolutely. just what comes to my mind. That's the when the movie comes out. That's the last line spoken in the movie. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And the um, most repeated alert. line in the movie. <laughs> that's true. There's a lot of good lines. I love. Again, this is spoilers. There's a bit that you have in that movie that's one of my favorites, and it's with a with a, a certain gun where you just go. I don't think this is real. <laughs> <laughs> and the delivery, 10 out of 10. Excellent. I forgot I was in that movie. Boy, you know, I'm so sorry everyone listening was no context to this Drive Mr. President thing that you're like, what are they talking yeah, about? But this why is on the YouTube page. This? This, was, this was literally, no joke, like three years of our lives and it still isn't out. It's been like five years of my life. Jeez. Got delayed um, because of the fact that the world was too awful. It's yeah. like, we just can't. I can't release this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but 
<laughs> we gotta wait until there's a different president. But here we are, and it's hopefully coming out this it's year. A little bit and better. <laughs> so. There's this movie called Dharma's Present that'll be coming out at some point, <laughs> just so you have context. If you go looking, there's a trailer on our page. There is a movie attached to it. You just haven't seen it yet. Just got to give you that context so you're not like, what are they talking about? <laughs> that, that's all you need to know for right now. <laughs> Everything beyond that, more information to come <laughs> at some point. I'm, I'm done giving promises on this movie. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm going to be so excited for it to finally come out. See, that's and I'm going to watch part. it and I'm going to have to like, relive my life like two years ago just like oh wow this is a different me 2018 even longer no 2018 see i went from not seeing it for years and then you saw it twice this year i saw it twice this year and that was really weird <laughs> the it fact just... that it's just it's possible out there to see this film it is it is possible to see it you just haven't you just haven't i haven't yeah. yet you haven't the viewers haven't uh, certain viewers have though there's been a select few a select people who have oh, seen yeah, early screenings right. of it with very unfinished sound and editing, but it they watched it. It does. It technically was a film. It, it Driver's President. It exists. It's like the Snyder cut. <laughs> Don't of, jinx it. It's the Snyder Don't cut of Doom Productions. <laughs> I have it backed up in so many places. Don't worry, it can't get lost. <laughs> I believe that. Like that, we learned our lesson. My biggest fear is that you're like going to upload it and just it's gone. I will once I even finish exporting it. It's like all right, taking that and putting it over here too, and on all my SD cards, and it's just gonna live in all these places until it's online. Correct. Yes. I'll mail a copy to myself that'll arrive in six years. <laughs> Have a safe that is temperature controlled buried under my house. Oh no, I got one in Sweden. One of their big <laughs> like mountaintop uh, safes. Perfect. Excellent. The apocalypse will save this. Like we'll not even end this movie. Like aliens invade. Earth. Aliens are gonna find this. <laughs> and this they're gonna find the remnant. <laughs> And this is all we all know die. about the human race, Drive Mr. President. What we believe may have been their greatest achievement. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Maybe it should have been lost. <laughs> Could have seen any other movie. They got that one. <laughs> Couldn't have gotten Video Carnage. <laughs> right? <laughs> At the very least. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a movie where it's like, I don't know if anyone's going to find it funny. It's, right? It's, it's a very a, specific style of humor. It's such an us from that era But it's era also movie. so dated. Like that's, it's, why yeah. the, that's why the documentary is releasing attached to it. Yeah. It's not like a separate thing. It's going to be like, Travis Preston, and the documentary. One video. Yeah. Watch this to get context, because, oh boy, you're going to need it. This, this might be a bad idea, but it might be even, like, worth considering, like, you show, like, five minutes of the movie. As it, shorts? No, no, no. So you, like... The thing is presented as a documentary, but it's like you have documentary stuff, five the first five minutes of the oh, movie. Oh, I see. Documentary stuff the next five minutes, or the next It like chunk breaks of it up. <laughs> just so you break okay, it let's down. explain what we just saw. <laughs> Not I, just like picture, talking, I just picture in uh, Emperor's New Groove, whenever it stops and Cusco comes up and starts <laughs> yeah. drawing on the screen. <laughs> Do that, but it's Chumli instead of Cusco. <laughs> so why does the main character, why does Chumli keep referring to this one woman as Mame? <laughs> let's, let's break this down here. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Chu Li and his mother's relationship is very complex. <laughs> uh, I think I finally unsubscribed to Chu Li on YouTube recently. You How monster. dare you? <laughs> Hasn't uploaded. You're gonna get years. an email from Chu Li tonight. <laughs> I can give them on that too. <laughs> you, you should Chum upload Lee a video as Chu Li talking about. His no, own wait. Is it one of? Is it one of Chu Li's videos? Like Chu Li sending an email to someone? I think <laughs> <It> so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking this up. The Chumley character is one of my favorite things that happened from Caramel. You know whose character, it's not their favorite? It's Amanda. <laughs> really? <his> girlfriend. Because <laughs> she lived with Chumley. <laughs> Some say she still uh, does. She, yeah, I was going to say, Chumley should not come home. Like. <laughs> oh, Chumley lived at home. <laughs> oh, no. Waking oh, up in the morning? Oh, hello, dear. <laughs> oh, God. If She's I woke up to She's got 10 subscribers. Bed, I'm 10 sorry. Subscribers. It could have been 11. I'm sorry, I took that from you. I just like Chumley's playlist of like cool cars. <laughs> That's one of my his playlists are the best <laughs> part of the YouTube. What a channel. joke! I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Our chuts lid. What is this? Oh. <laughs> 
I know this one. I remember this one. Read this. <laughs> read it out loud. What's it say? Uh, oh. Yeah, no, you can't read it for us. Can you read in Chumley's voice? Well, yeah, get Chumley to dub over this part of the podcast. Can make I an appearance? can't say this. <laughs> 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 Chumley, not Superman. Chumley, not Superman. There's a YouTube page y'all should follow. If you're listening this long, you deserve to yeah, find no, this page. It's... This one's titled Art Shots Hiroshima. <laughs> 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 but it's just what is this? It's SpongeBob. Just SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Did you black out when you'd make these? I don't know. Like, I don't remember anything. You're just finding these. Like I made this. This was no, me. Chumli made this. Yeah, right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> just gotta pretend that Chumli isn't you to save yourself. I don't know what you're One talking about. One of them about. was Chumli just stole Bones's video. Wait, really? <laughs> I, I remember when that happened. I remember the conversation that led to that happening. That was hilarious. That video has like a good chunk There's of views There's one now. of Ace at a Sherry's, I think, where you filmed them and... Oh, wait. I, that one makes me it. laugh every time because Ace's reaction during it just is so funny. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> all it is. <laughs> it and, feels oh so my real. Oh goodness, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> Ace, thank you for making that video. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, well, a, that's a cursed channel. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to retire it, but... <laughs> don't. I, no, you have to don't. return it to it. You have to bring it back. And maybe once once every five years, like Frosty the Snowman or something. <laughs> that that's part of the uh, promotion <laughs> for driving Mr. President. Just that channel comes back to life. Yeah, if you want to do a deep dive on the characters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if I guess if you want to see Drive Mr. President, watch uh, the trailer, but then. Seek out Chumli Shapiro. Seek out Chum like he's an old sage in the woods. <laughs> he might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just picturing him like one of those hidden masters in like that like classic like samurai movie. Like where you have to go find the mentor and it's just Hello there. <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. But it's but it's uh Chumli. Uh yeah. yeah, well, that might be a good spot to end it <laughs> before we go deeper down the rabbit hole. What even hole. is this episode anymore? This Let's episode see. is a little bit of everything. Oh gosh, an hour and seven minutes. Yeah, all of a sudden that it. last 20 minutes kind of just went. We did it. We made it. That 40 minute lull, I guess. 40 normal. minute lull. <laughs> or that lull at 40 minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> or maybe it was. Maybe this was the real podcast. Maybe the real podcast was the friends we made along the way. Aww. Who knows? Wait, I just made these friends? thought we made these friends years ago thank you so much for listening to the doom productions <laughs> podcast it's been great having you join us for this one uh if you like this uh hit that thumbs up if you have ideas of what you'd like us to talk about in the future or please. any other guests you would like <laughs> please. <laughs> please we're we desperate ideas. We're, anything we're desperate what's your favorite um, food we'll talk about it it's it's a go we love talking about things we don't know anything about so <laughs> let us know um but yeah give us a subscribe and a like if you're listening on youtube if you're listening on spotify uh follow so you know when the next episode comes out we release these every monday so we're excited to get the next one out to you next week but uh yeah thanks for so much for being here and we'll catch you on the next one